Good morning and welcome back to another video. Today we are making bars again. As you saw in the last video, we had some issues with using quick oats versus what we had been using as rolled oats. And since then I have gone back, looked at some of the previous recipes, looked at some of the previous bars that have been sitting uh, for about a week now, realized that our 10th version is the best consistency of all of them. It was a little salty, so we're just gonna reduce the salt on that. We're gonna make another batch of that. And then we can just start tweaking the flavor. Um, I'm planning to just individually package them. So if we make it today, package it today, uh, my long run on Saturday, hopefully by then, the bars will have hardened up a little bit and we can test them out before the run without them falling apart like they did last time. That's on the agenda for this afternoon. This morning, we are in problem solving mode. And to explain this, I might need to use a whiteboard. When you are making bars, specifically the one that we are making, you are using what's called a cold slab bar production method, manufacturing method. And basically what a cold slab is, is that you are making a slab of bars, or just like a big, almost like a sheet pan. Um, and you are rolling it out, you're compressing it, and then you are cutting it into the size bars that you need. This is a little different compared to um, certain types of bars that are extruded. An extrusion machine basically is a big hopper that you dump all your ingredients into. It kind of blends it up, mixes it up, and then it actually extrudes it through a pipe, almost like you are piping icing onto a cake. And then as it's coming out, a guillotine will chop the bar into the size that you want, and then it goes through the packaging. Again, what we're doing is cold slab bar, which means we need a bit wider of a production space, and we are making anywhere from 10 to 12 bars wide at a time, and then the length is just determined by the machine you're using or how you are doing it. So, so far, I have just been doing it on the counter, as you can see, with rolling pin guides to just adjust the thickness, rolling it out, creating that slab. Our slab right now is only about four to five bars. In the future, it'll be a lot bigger. So that's kind of the basics of what we are doing right now is a quote unquote bench top test. Um, going from the bench top to larger scale manufacturing is obviously gonna cause some changes. It's going to need to adjust some of the ingredient profiles. We'll need to adjust the actual directions of how we're making it. So how long are we heating up the syrup? At what temperature are we heating up the syrup? How long does it need to sit in the fridge or the freezer before you package it? All that kind of stuff. So earlier this week, I had a call with a potential co-manufacturer. Um, if you don't know, a co-manufacturer is someone who can manufacture your product for you. So in my case, bars, they specialize in manufacturing bars and bars only. So you would go to them, you would give them all the ingredients, you'd have to ship them all to them. You would give them all the directions and the recipe and they are basically mixing, creating the bar and packaging the bar and then you have to ship it to yourself. So a big perk of using a co-manufacturer is that you can create a lot higher volume um, than me in a commercial kitchen. Con of commercial manufacturing is the total expense that it requires to go to them. So with them, you're paying a fee to test your product in their line to figure out what they need to do to manufacture your bar, to figure out how many bars they can make in a day, which then calculates out to how much it's gonna cost per bar. And it's this huge process that is a pretty big upfront fee. And that's before you even start manufacturing the bar. And then on top of that, you have your ingredient fees, your shipping fees, your packaging fees. So a lot of money. And when I was talking to the manufacturer the other day, I quickly started to get really discouraged by just how expensive this is going to be. Up until two days ago, um, I was mainly focused on doing the bar in a commercial kitchen. And then when I was talking to some of the wrapper suppliers that I mentioned a few videos ago, they were all telling me that I had to go to a manufacturer in order to get the wrappers that we're looking for. Followed one of their connections, went to do this phone call with him, Found a lot of details. He was awesome. He was super nice. Kind of walked me through the whole process um, and also the methodology of when do you need to go to a co-manufacturer. And he just spent a lot of time on the phone with me. But you know, when you're getting these large dollar figures, when you don't have a unlimited bank account to support it, it is tough to figure out what the right decision is because we don't want to be spending all of the time in the kitchen making the bar and no time marketing the bar, but we also don't wanna just dump a ton of money into 
making the bar and then have nothing left to sell the bar with. So it kind of breaks down to a decision of A, where do we allocate our time and money? And B, what kind of volumes are we expecting at launch? So let me explain a little bit more. So as I mentioned, our two options are co-man or self production. And with this decision making process, the biggest issue is going to be money and time and volume. With the co-manufacturer, we can do a lot more volume, which is basically just the bars made in X amount of time. Self-manufacturing, obviously our volume will be much less. At the same time, co-manufacturer, the price is going to be much greater than self-manufacturing. That also goes along with the volume, which is whatever you wanna make of it. Obviously your price is gonna go up the more volume that you make. The only difference is that with this self-manufacturing route, we aren't um, paying that upfront cost to just see how our bar works in the line, which is pretty much the cost of making a full production day's worth of bars. And you're not really walking away with a full production day's worth of bars. That initial, we'll call this the initial cost is much higher because at the end of the day, once we get to the per bar process, it's not as crazy. Um, it's just much higher minimums to do it with a manufacturer. So once we kind of get this out of the way, it becomes a question of what's more important to us, the cost or the volume produce, and then where this dollar value could be applied to if we're saving money by not going the co-manufacturer route. I don't know if this really makes sense because I'm still trying to make sense of it in my head, but the crux of the problem for me right now is the packaging. I really want to be able to use legit real bar wrappers. I don't want to be using like Amazon purchased heat seal wrappers or just cheap stuff that you would see at a farmer's market. We want it to have the custom branding. We want it to feel like a real bar because I don't want this to come off as some back shop in the woods making these bars and slinging them out to people. We want it to be legitimate. We want it to represent the brand that we're trying to build. And to do that, we need real wrappers. The main issue right now is with the Co-Man, I know we can get real wrappers, but with the self-manufacturer, I'm not sure what we can do with the wrappers. Um, I've been reaching out to companies, reaching out to suppliers, trying to get answers on if we can do the wrapper and if they can pre-seal them so that we can run it at our, at our own place, or are we going to need to go with some sort of machine and thus space to have the machine to do the wrappers ourselves? Like I said, with the co-manufacturers, you have this huge upfront fee which we're saving by not or by not going with the co-manufacturer. So could we apply some of the money that we would have spent with the co-manufacturer for this initial fee and buy the machine that could run the wrappers? That's an option. Again, this is kind of a brainstorming session that I go through in my head of like, all right, what are all the options on the playing field here and how do we make the best decision possible? And at the end of the day, I don't think there is the best decision, quote unquote. They're all gonna have their pros and cons. They're all gonna have their reasons why you shouldn't do this. And I'm sure somebody who's been in this industry for years is probably gonna tell me whatever decision I end up making, someone is going to argue that it was the wrong decision. So you kind of have to look at it, evaluate it on your own means, on your own situation, in your own circumstances, and decide what is the best option to move your business forward. The way I'm trying to look at it is what is going to give us the best long-term result? What is gonna give us probably, hopefully, the fastest path to production and getting these bars into the world and getting feedback and just opening that customer feedback loop? and what is gonna give us the best quality bar and wrapper. Using those core principles of a solution, we need to look at this problem and decide, is it worth it to invest pretty much everything that we have into the first line of production, which would include that upfront fee and the first batch of production? Or do we save some of that money and invest it into CapEx, so 
a flow wrap machine maybe. I found a couple used ones that aren't wildly expensive. They're far less than the upfront fee it would take us to run at the co-manufacturer. But if you get the flow wrap machine, then you need to get space to have the flow wrap machine. I don't know if there's any certifications that we need to package food on our own production line. And thus, if we have our own space for the flow wrap machine, do we then need to be making the bars in that space or can we still make them at a commercial kitchen and then put them in to a different room to package them? Or we keep grinding the phones, find a packaging supplier that can provide us with the pre-sealed packages of the custom branded packaging that we want but available to just seal it into a heat sealer. Obviously that last option would be the most ideal because it saves us the most money and it gives us exactly what we're looking for in quality brand, quality packaging um, without the upfront cost of buying a flow wrap machine. The wrappers themselves going that route are a lot more expensive per bar, but you might just have to eat that cost at the beginning production runs just to be able to get the packaging that you want at the MOQ, the minimum order that you're looking for without having to go get a machine or hire somebody who has a machine to package these things. It's a really confusing process um, and it's, it's a difficult one because you wanna seek out help from people who have done this before, but at the same time, when they were doing it, the situations were completely different. They might have been operating under a different set of constraints, whether they had more money, they had access to different types of manufacturing, so it's, it, it does kind of come down to a personal decision um, and it's one that can't be made lightly because it's going to affect the entire future of your business, but it's one that you do have to make. That's the thing is that I think at a, at a lot of points in the past with different businesses I've worked on or different people I've worked with in their own businesses, they or I got to this point where it is a kind of a this or that scenario and you can't physically move the business past this point without making a decision at this point. And if you don't make a decision, it's all for nothing. So you might as well go forward with the possibility of making the wrong decision as long as you're making a decision. Because from what I've learned in the past is that you may experience failure, you may have made the wrong decision at that point in time, but the likelihood of that decision causing complete catastrophe and completely ruining you or taking you completely out of business is very small. There's only a few things that will actually stop you completely. It's a matter of picking the best of what you have in front of you, moving forward from it. And if for some reason there are issues or it fails, you need to take that learning and apply it to the next thing because it only fully fails if you give up on it. Um, that's a lot easier said than done when you're not the one writing the checks and you're just telling somebody or telling yourself that. But when you actually have to make that decision and you are writing checks for a large amount of money, um, you you want to have as much detail as possible before doing that and jumping off that cliff. So right now it's just a matter of deciding on what we're going to do moving forward. I'm really leaning towards the self manufacturer route, at least for these first couple production runs, just because if we go with a command, we're not going to be in production for probably three to four months. By doing that, you're adding a lot of lead time onto the production and you're adding a lot of time between now and when customers can actually get the bar in their hands you know it's we need to start getting it out there we need to start getting feedback on things that people want to change or things that they would like to see differently with the brand so that we can begin iterating and really building on these foundational blocks that i have created in my head you can come up with the best plan in your head but you don't really know what it's going to end up like until it's out there in the world. I guess what I'm trying to say is that these decisions are difficult and you should take time to really think them through and think all the pros and cons through and consider what all your options are before just jumping or getting discouraged or giving up. It's not meant to be easy. No one said it was gonna be easy and it's really on you to pick up the pieces solve the problems at the end of the day that is that that really is all that running starting and owning a business is is how can you solve problems with the minimal amount of information that you have and hopefully it works out in the long run outside of the production decision and trying to figure out what to do on that end i've spent a lot of time building the website and our welcome email and i'm really proud to say that the website is 
pretty much done for what we want right now. As you can see, when you enter the website, you're going to be greeted by the waitlist check-in. So if you just enter your email, you'll join the waitlist and get the email. Uh, but on the website, we just go over the story. I've added a page, a couple pages of training plan, nutrition plans, and run club finder. Right now, the training plan page, the nutrition plan phase page, and the virtual events page are still under production because uh, I'm trying to build these all myself. But the um, find a club page is pretty much done. Um, so as you see, when you go to the page, you just scroll down and I've just been adding lists of run clubs. And if you just click on them, they actually take you to the website or the Instagram page that the run club might be on. So you can learn more information about them. You figure out what days they're going. Um, and it's just kind of all in the mindset of how are we helping the everyday athlete get started or train in a simpler way. And one of the biggest things, especially if you're moving to a new city is finding people to hang out with, finding run clubs in your area and finding out where they meet, when they meet. Um, a lot of them just run off of Instagram. So if you don't follow them on Instagram or you don't follow somebody on Instagram who goes to these, you might not know where, when, or how they meet. So by doing this page, I'm hoping that we can help out people that are looking for new events in their area, looking to get involved in a run club, um, not just specifically our run club that will be here in Austin. And along with the website and the email collection, and I'm, I think I'm now at a point where we can start driving people to the website and start doing consistent like weekly or bi-weekly email kind of kind of updating people on the goings ons of the business, what it's going to take to build this, what we're looking at timeline wise, maybe some more real time updates on production, getting reviews, getting samples, how you might be able to receive free samples, um, because we do want people to be able to try the product with their training, get the taste, get the flavor, get the texture, what we need to change, what should we work on. Um, obviously before we go to like a co-manufacturer route or even start self-producing it. That's what I need to figure out today. Again, we still do need to solve the issue on the whiteboard. So that's what I'm gonna think through today. I'm gonna try to spreadsheet out the cost, what we can do. Hopefully, like I said, I can get on the phone with some suppliers of the wrappers to figure out if we can do the pre-sealed wrappers, um, which would make life so much easier, uh, even if it is a little bit more expensive per bar and then we will go from there. wrapped up chefing up the next version of the bar. This one is looking better. I froze it for about 15 minutes um, just to kind of speed up the cooling process before packaging them up individually. So I put three of them in packages. We're gonna let those sit for four to five days. And then I left two out that I'll just put in a Ziploc bag, which will kind of emulate the packaging, but at least then we can kind of check on it over the days to see how it firms up. I ended up going with a mix of like 80% re regular rolled oats and 20% of the quick oats. And then I also changed up the rice crisps that we're using. Um, we're testing out a new supplier. So I added those in as well. They're a little bit more crunchier than the previous versions, but I'm hoping they soften up a little bit once they're in the bar and have sat for a couple of days. I'm gonna finish wrapping these up and get them in the bag and they'll sit 
for a while and we'll hope that they harden up like the couple previous versions have once they've sat around for a while. So I just wrapped up editing a new reel, announcing Doer on my Instagram, and I finished up some of the aftermath of making the bar, which included just um, getting all of the new details into the spreadsheet, all the size, all of the weight, how many uh, carbs, fats, proteins that that size bar will give us. And we are going to wait to see if the bars solidify. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that this recipe works and that we can just start focusing on the flavor. But like I said, we're going to have to wait four or five days, maybe a week um, to see if it indeed did work and if it does hold together. So that's all I've really got for today. Um, I'm excited. I just announced this whole thing to Instagram. Um, it's kind of been a side project and you guys on YouTube know about it, but Instagram, I hadn't really shared the full breakdown. Um, We got the website done. I mentioned the website in the video, so we'll see if people start going to the website, if something breaks, if we need to improve something. But overall, um, really exciting end of the day, and I will see you guys in the next video.